The next presentation is stereotactic radio surgery for AVMs with a hemorrhagic history. The University of Pittsburgh experience in 470 consecutive patients. Dr. Kano. Thank you, Chair Person. It is great honor to be able to speak to you today. I'd like to talk about stereotactic radio surgery for hemorrhagic AVMs. The generally accepted goal of treatment of four AVMs is elimination of intracranial hemorrhage risk and prevention of new neurological deficit. Radiosurgery has been widely used to manage patients with AVMs. The primary disadvantage of radiosurgery lies in the risk of hemorrhage during the latency interval between radiosurgery and obliteration. We evaluated the risk of rehemorrhage in AVM patients who underwent radiosurgery after sustaining one or more prior hemorrhages. In this study, total number of hemorrhage, hemorrhagic AVM who underwent gamma knife was 407. The median patient age was 34 years old. 87% of patients had single hemorrhage before gamma knife, and 13 had multiple hemorrhages. 19% had prior surgical resection, and 16% had embolization. 40 per, uh, 45 patients were discovered aneurysm, and 13 had prior creeping, and 7 had prior embolization. Remaining Patent aneurysm was 25, 6%. 55% had superficial and 45% had deep AVMs. Spectral marching grade 1 or 2 was 29%, 3 was 43%, 4 was 9%, and 6 was 19%. In this study, uh, there were no grade 5 because it was treated by staged gamma knife. The median diameter of nidus was uh, 1.9 centimeter. Median nidus volume was 2.3 cc, and the median margin dose was 20 gray. Median follow-up period was 66 months. 255 of 407 patients had total obliteration uh, was confirmed by MRI and or angiography. Three-year total obliteration rate was 56%, four-year was 77, five-year was 80, and 10-year was 82% after a single session gamma knife. The median latency to total obliteration was 32 months. Nine of 25 AVMs with patent aneurysm developed hemorrhage after gamma knife. In this group, the one-year hemorrhage rate was 12%. On the other hand, uh, in the group of no or occluded aneurysm, the one-year hemorrhage rate was only 2.6%. Presence of patent aneurysm was significantly associated with higher rate of rehemorrhage rate. In the multivariate analysis, smaller target volume, smaller diameter, higher margin dose, smaller number of prior hemorrhage, and no patent aneurysm was significantly associated with lower rate of rehemorrhage after gamma knife. In the multivariate analysis, Higher margin dose was no patent aneurysm was uh, significantly associated with lower rehemorrhage rate. Six had intranidal aneurysm, five had immediately prenidal aneurysm, and 14 had the circle of virus aneurysm. Total 25 patients had patent aneurysm. But 13 of circle of virus aneurysm had crept, and 7 of circle of virus aneurysm were embolized. Total 20 circle uh, of virus aneurysms were uh, treated. In our previous series, immediately proximal flow-related prenatal aneurysm 
often result as uh, at the AVM of it rates. Circle of virus aneurysm requires separate management. These are uh, case examples of intranidal aneurysm associated with AVM. Case one underwent gamma knife followed by embolization. Case two underwent gamma knife for AVM and aneurysm had total reiteration after two years after uh, two years after gamma knife. This is a case example of immediately prenatal aneurysm which was embolized. This is a case example of circle of virus aneurysm uh, with associated AVM. This case was embolized before gamma knife. This case underwent gamma knife for AVM alone. Circle of virus aneurysm as well as AVM had complete obliteration three years after gamma knife. This is an important Kaplan-Meier curve comparing patent aneurysm with treated aneurysm. Only one case in the group of patients with treated aneurysm had a hemorrhage after gamma knife. In the group of patients with presence of patent aneurysm, one yearly hemorrhage rate was 12%. I would like to emphasize that presence of patent aneurysm was significantly associated with higher rate of rehemorrhage after gamma knife. There were some variables such as age and ABM location that were affected hemorrhage rate uh, between the groups of patients with and without patent aneurysm. To reduce bias, the case match control study was performed. After case matching, variables that might affect outcome between both cohorts disappeared. This Kaplan-Meier curve shows the presence of patent aneurysm was significantly associated with higher rate of rehemorrhage rate after gamma knife. One year rehemorrhage rate of patent aneurysm group was 12% and of no aneurysm group was only 2%. Complication after gamma knife included symptomatic adverse reducing effect of 7%. 3% had a permanent neurological deficit due to adverse radiation effect. Delayed cyst formation was 3%. There were no delayed radiation-related neoplasms. There were no hemorrhage after total reiteration. I'd like to summarize the main findings of this study. Four-year total reiteration rate after gamma knife was 80%. Cumulative rehemorrhage risk were 3.2% at one year, 5.5% at three years, 5.5, uh, 6.6% .6 at five years. ABM uh, with patent aneurysm were associated with a higher rehemorrhage rate. ABMs associated with crypt or embolized aneurysms had a significantly lower risk of hemorrhage in the latency interval after gamma knife. This is our suggested treatment algorithm for hem hemorrhagic AVM selected for gamma knife with or without associated aneurysms. In cases with uh, intranidal and prenidal aneurysms, AVM should be treated by gamma knife first and then consider aneurysm management. As for circle of virus aneurysm, if hemorrhage from AVM, AVM should be treated by gamma knife first, and then consider aneurysm management. If hemorrhage from aneurysm, aneurysm should be treated first by choir or creep and then ABM should be treated by gamma knife. Cases without aneurysm should be treated by gamma knife alone. If residual ABM had been still patent three to five years after gamma knife, repeat gamma knife should be considered.
That's all I have to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Our discussion will be Dr. Robert Spetzler. Uh, thank you. Congratulations to the authors for presenting uh, so much uh, data. Uh, well, first, I think um, I, I did, wasn't able to appreciate completely out of the abstract that was sent to me um, the algorithm uh, of management nor uh, how to do the, um, uh, the, the distribution. I'm, I'm surprised that there are 19 percent, for example, um, grade six AVMs in my entire for grade six AVMs, I have seen in my entire lifetime maybe five of them. Um, for there to be 19 percent, I think you'd have to look at those and really see why they are grade six as opposed to grade one or two, because they're obviously small AVMs, uh, depending on the size. Uh, second of all, if you look at the bleed rates, they are pretty significant bleed rates. Now, in that cohort, 29% of the patients were grade one or grade two AVMs. If you look, for example, at the most recent publication by Morgan, the surgical risk for treating grade one and two AVMs with immediate, immediate obliteration uh, is 0.7%. Where is the rationale for treating grade one and two AVMs uh, with stereotactic radiosurgery? In the algorithm, I'm surprised how often you put stereotactic radiosurgery for treating an aneurysm, as if somehow by doing that first, you affected in any way the angioarchitecture of the arteriovenous malformation. The late uh, rebleeding rates of those AVMs that were obliterated, the, it was a zero percent. I had two cases that I was showing, one which was a cyst. Uh, that occurred 11 years after uh, radio surgery uh, that had bled. Angiogram was completely negative. At surgery, you could see the uh, old blood, and you could actually see the tangle of vessels. Whether that was now sort of a, a being turned into a cavernous malformation because it's angiographically negative uh, is unknown. And then finally, I showed a case of uh, one that was radiated over 20 years ago where a angiogram follow-up uh, two years ago at UCLA was completely normal, returned with a massive uh, hemorrhage. So the idea that because you are angiographically or MRI obliterated and free of any risk of hemorrhage uh, was not compatible uh, with those examples. I compliment the authors for presenting this material and it really leaves uh, open uh, the ability to discuss this in detail. Thank you.